The commotion you may have noticed near Hall and Thomas Streets in North Dallas with Dallas policemen standing around is not a raid. Instead, these off-duty policemen are diverting traffic during the filming of a new motion picture called Book of Numbers. About 80% of the people in the movie are locals. Three locals are Charles Lewis, a Dallas school teacher at Oliver Wendell Holmes Junior High School in Oak Cliff, Ray McDonald, a former football player from McKinney, and Nat Clark, a local Dallas disc jockey. All three play goons, are tough guys in the movie. For the people in this North Dallas community, having people they really know in a motion picture is really something. June Gray, Channel 8 News on the Move. Modular-style ambulances, and they cost $11,000 apiece. That's the basic price just for the vehicle. Another $4,000 worth of equipment will be added to turn them into emergency rescue units. From collapsible cots to Band-Aids, from hemostats to OB kits, and all in between. When they roll, they'll be in contact with doctors and have the equipment necessary to follow the doctor's orders all the way to the hospital. The keys of the first five of 22 of these ambulances were turned over today by Modular Ambulance Corporation Board Chairman Gordon Allen to Dallas Fire Chief Merrill C. Hendricks. These emergency vehicles are now en route to the shop where they'll spend a couple of three weeks having all the equipment installed. Once that's done, this will be the best equipped fleet in the state of Texas, some 22 ambulances on the streets of Dallas to offer better emergency medical care in time of emergency. Jerry Park.
Channel 8 News on the move on the overhead in downtown Dallas.
Well, what the jury said was that he was guilty on every count. That was 23 indictments. And his entire defense was based on the fact that he said, I had involvement. And so the jury definitely and completely, and I am real proud of, of their decision, because it does vindicate me completely. The jury, 12 completely neutral people, have said that uh, his defense just did not make sense. Well, how do you think this is going to affect your political future? Well, I don't think it'll affect it. I'm going to win my congressional race in November, just as I've won them before. I've had to go through two campaigns with this situation. And frankly, I am real glad that this case is behind me, because the facts were brought out. It was well tried, and he certainly had good counsel, and the state was well represented. It was a well tried case, and I, I think it settles the matter completely and finally. Well, I'm just sick and tired of people outside of Irving coming in and running our community for us. I believe the people of Irving are intelligent enough and have a good enough administration to run their own city. And we don't need any entertainment promoters from Grand Prairie coming over and calling themselves Irving citizens. It just gripes me. How many citizens of Irving do you feel Mr. Chapman, in fact, represents? I'd like to know. I doubt if he knows any citizens in Irving. Apparently, the man needs, Grand, needs Irving to be wet in order to get liquor in Grand Prairie. You know, it'll be tougher to win it again. You know, I think we have a good chance, though. Um, we've had a lot of, well, to tell you the truth, we've had more pressure on us in the past to win the thing, you know, than we do now. You know, like uh, the years past, I mean, we've always been um, tagged as a loser, you know, the guy that got to the end and couldn't finish it up, and that was a lot of pressure, you know. And uh, now I think that, uh, I think we should have more confidence now that we've already done the thing and uh, everybody feels we can do it again. Personally, how do you feel? Do you feel that you all can do it again? Sure. I sure do. It's, you know, I realize it'll take a lot of uh, good luck and, uh, you know, such as uh, keeping player, keep players from getting hurt and this, that, and the other, but uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure we can do it again. Now the parade will travel north on Griffin to Maine, east on Maine to Harwood, south on Harwood one block to Commerce Street, west on Commerce to Ackard, and then south on Ackard to Kenton. It will turn west on Kenton about a half a block and then make a turn to the right and go through the exhibit hall of the new convention center. On exiting from the convention center, it will go down a ramp which has been prepared for, for them to come out and will disperse at Kenton and Griffin Expressway. The parade is expected to be over approximately 2.30 p.m. This carries us through the lunch hour, the noon hour, and uh, all of the uh, downtown area will virtually be isolated except in extreme emergencies.
I've received several contact eight calls from viewers who are concerned about the fatal and near fatal accidents which have been occurring at the railroad crossings in the Dallas area. So I decided to go out and take a look at them. At this intersection, Maple and Hudnall, there are no railroad crossing lights. Just one sign, which is sometimes difficult to see from your car. We're approaching a railroad crossing on Langdon Road, just west of Highway 75 in Hutchins. And I can't even see it. At this point, there might have been a fatal mishap if a train was coming. The lights blink red at this busy intersection when the trains are changing boxcars. It's dangerous because people get tired of waiting and go on through the light. This is Jean Lupin with Contact 8. Frazier, the sensuous lion, is dead. The 20-year-old husband of 11 wives, who set an example for the old men of the world, has passed on, leaving a legend and, incidentally, 35 children. All is in mourning at Lion Country Safari in Grand Prairie, where four of Frazier's cubs now reside. The place is festooned with wreaths and black ribbons. Fred Coston, being a public relations man who relied on Frazier's publicity value is one of the chief mourners. Fred, what was the cause of death? Well, basically, Judy, he died of old age. He was, after all, near the human equivalent of 100 years old. I understand there are going to be elaborate funeral arrangements. What are those going to be? We'll have 10 rangers carry Frazier's body <laughs> in, a, in a casket up, up the glass, grassy knoll uh, outside of Lion Country Safari. In there California? Will, yes, in California. Uh, there will also be approximately 100 people from Leisure World, which is a retirement village in Orange County, who will uh, be on the viewing platform watching the proceedings and also singing uh, Nearer My God to Thee with bagpipe accompaniment in the background. Do you suppose there's any way that Fraser's children can replace him in legend? No. I was afraid of that. If I, there's only one Frasier, and there will forever be only one Frasier. I don't think anybody could make up a, a batting score of 35 kids in one year. That's the story. For Channel 8 News and the Move, this is Judy Hanna at Lion Country Safari. <laughs>